Hello everybody, this is Dr. Aparna. Today we are going to study something very very interesting. The present extract that you are going to study today called No Man is an Island is actually from a book called Our Growing Humanity written by Minocher Rustam Masani, popularly known as Minu Masani. What do you understand by growing humanity? What does he understand by growing humanity? This extract opens our eyes to the different forms of government that prevail in this world and for the humanity to decide which is the best for them. Living in a society, can we live an isolated life? We belong to a society. A human being is a social being. We live with everybody. How can we generate comfort? How can we generate love? How can we generate this humane attitude towards each other so that we have a future that is bright and comfortable for all of us? What is it that makes man intelligent or wise? All these things will be covered in this lesson today. I hope you will enjoy this lesson a lot because it teaches us a lot. Let us now start our first module with the introduction of the author, Minu Masani. Minocher Rustum Masani, popularly known as Minu Masani, was a Parsi political leader from Rajkot, Gujarat. Author was an activist in India's struggle for freedom. He was also a parliamentarian and a member of the Constituent Assembly. He was Free India's eminent liberal. Masani was a barrister trained in London. He joined the freedom struggle with the Quit India movement and was drawn to the Communist Party in the early 1930s. However, he moved away to be a socialist and a supporter of the mixed economy in free and open society. This was the theme of series of lectures that he delivered in the year 1947 to Bombay University's School of Economics and later these lectures were published under the title Plea for Mixed Economy. He was happiest when surrounded by young children and young people. His first and the last books are dedicated to the youngsters. Let us now know and understand what this lesson, No Man is an Island, which is actually an extract from his book, Our Growing Humanity, tell us in the next module. Bertrand Russell once said that Man is becoming more intelligent, he is acquiring more knowledge, but is he getting any wiser? This is a very important question that we have to ask ourselves, because had we been wiser, we would never have fought the two world wars. Minu Masani says something else. He says, man will eventually become so intelligent that in future, all the states of the world will combine together to form a federation, a union. We would all live under one government. We will all be governed by one government. The day it happens, we would all perhaps be happy. But then, living under a federation or being governed by a federation or by one government in the entire world is not the end of all happiness. It is just the beginning because when we start living together, when we have understanding, when we have cooperation, then only will we progress. This is what Masani is trying to tell us. There will be growth in humanity. We will lead a richer, fuller and happier life. He further states that we know more than what our ancestors did. We were able to overcome a lot of hurdles in history, in our life in the past because we were able to withstand all the problems. 
we lived together and worked together as compatriots, as friends. And this is the greatest thing that men have. They can live together and they should live together. But that is something, an understanding which should dawn on them. But then it will definitely take some time. It is because human beings have followed, if not all the time, an advice that has been written in an old Sanskrit text which says that a family is more important than an individual. A community is more important than a family. A country is more important than a community. And the soul is more important in the entire world. Therefore, for the family, sacrifice the individual. For the community, the family. For the country, the community. And for the soul, the entire world. In this extract, Masani tries to find answers to the kind of governance humanity requires at this point. His ideas are really futuristic. He talks about humanity living together. Let us now understand more about this in the next module. Masani says, even if all the states in the world were to unite under a federation, it would not automatically guarantee progress because to progress we need to be governed well. And that is very, very important. How then can we decide which kind of government is good for us? Under what kind of government will humanity progress? Where can we find true happiness? Therefore, Masani says that there are two tests that we need to put ourselves through. According to the author, these two tests are very important for us to determine which kind of government is good for us. The government should be so organized that it should be able to provide the nicest homes, the best food, the greatest comfort, the finest education and the greatest amount of leisure to possible for people. That is very, very important. A government that looks after the comforts and the needs of the people. Next, the second test to a good government is that it should at the same time give the largest amount of freedom to every man and woman and should treat them with a lot of respect and sympathy. This is very important because a government should not violate the human rights, the individual rights that human beings have. As long as we are happy, as long as we are able to express ourselves, we are living in a society which is governed by a good government. And that is what Masani is trying to tell us in this extract. He goes on to say that perhaps democracy is the best form of government. He quotes Abraham Lincoln because it was Abraham Lincoln who said, Democracy is a government of the people, by the people and for the people. And this is a slogan that we've always heard of, especially when we live in India, because that is what democracy is all about. We can elect our representatives and if we do not like them, we can bring on new ones in to govern us. Lord Acton, who was a great historian, also said something about liberty. He said, liberty is not a means to a higher political end. It is itself the highest political end, which means that without self-government, there can be no lasting possibility of a good government. We should learn to govern ourselves. Let us now learn more about the two different types of governments that people would possibly choose from in the next module. Throughout the world, 
people are faced with choices of different types of governments. Supposing we were to equate governments with doctors who say that they have medicines to cure all illnesses, then let us be chemists and analyze which medicine is really good for us. Therefore, it is for us to decide which kind of government is really good. When we really analyze all types of government that are existing in this world, then ultimately we arrive at two possible governments that are perhaps most popular and surviving in the world today. Let us now understand these two governments and see whether they are really good for humanity and whether we are able to progress under these governments. The first government that Masani talks about is obviously a democracy wherein people elect their own representatives and if they are not happy with how the people are governing them then these representatives can be replaced. We can elect a new government. In such countries we would definitely expect that there would be a very high literacy rate we would expect that there would be a rising standard of living in the people, greater equality between all the people. But then is it always true of all democracies? No, that is not. Because there is obviously a lot of difference between the haves and the have-nots in democracies. We have seen that for ourselves. There is no equality. And there is a possibility that the richer get rich and the poorer become poor. So a democracy is one form of government that is an option in front of us. In the second kind, Masani says that it is a dictator kind of government wherein there is one man who is trying to control all the people of the country wherein all the sectors of the country are under the control of the government, whether it is the people, whether it is the workforce, whether it is what kind of work people should do, everything right from the factories to the railways to communications, everything is controlled by the government. This kind of government would probably say that all people would be treated equally. But then in this kind of government we have seen that people are not really happy. In the name of equality we see a lot of disparity. People are not given that much of importance. The human loses his individuality. However, the conditions of work do not improve. Equality is a distant dream. Liberty is definitely battered away. For equality and security appear to be a distant dream. It's lost and nothing is gained in this kind of government. History therefore tries to teach us that there is no shortcut to a good life. There is no shortcut to happiness. It has to be earned by the people and people have to achieve it. Can this be achieved by violence? Is violence the solution to all the problems of humanity? No, it definitely isn't because the two world wars that were fought in this world have got us nothing but trauma. We have been very unhappy. There have been people who believe in non-violence and truth. Such people have understood that human beings can live together, can live happily with non-violent means also. Such people are the great Ashoka, Buddha, Jesus Christ and in our own country Mahatma Gandhi who is an example of truth and non-violence. Because perhaps we are the only democracy in the world which got its independence without a civil war. Let us now understand our need to evolve in the next module. Now let us do a little recap 
about what Masani was trying to tell us. First, he said that there were two tests that we had to undergo to determine what kind of governance we need. Then he said that there were two kinds of governments. That was one was democracy and one was the dictator kind of government. Whatever the kind of government, we need to evolve as human beings. And unless and until we have that process of evolution within us, we cannot find peace and happiness. So the next segment that I am taking up is about our need to evolve. We often hear people say that most human beings have not yet evolved. What do you mean by evolved? There was a peasant in Russia who spoke to Maxim Gorky, who was a great writer. He said, you can fly in the air like birds, you can swim in the seas like a fish, but you don't know how to walk upon the earth like men. Now that is a very interesting statement because really to live like men, we need to have a lot of wisdom. We need to understand that there is something called non-violence and truth that will take us ahead in life. At the same time, we must realize that human race is very, very young. According to a book called The Story of Civilization, written by C. E. M. Juad, he says that if we were to equate the life on earth to a hundred years, then man appeared on this earth in the past one month only, and that civilization appeared on the earth only seven to eight weeks back. That means that man as a civilized person is still new on this earth. Perhaps he needs that many more years to evolve, that many more years to understand that violence cannot fetch him true happiness and that we need to understand the importance of non-violence and truth to really progress in life. This is a continuous process of evolution. Just as we have evolved from apes and have become men, that does not mean that our evolution process has stopped. We are evolving and we will continue to evolve till we become unblemished like perhaps the gods. We find that some peoples in some races have understood the importance of non-violence and the best examples of these are the Swedes and the Swiss because they have become people who understand the importance of non-violence. If people don't learn this sooner or later, like dinosaurs and bronchosaurs, we would definitely destroy ourselves and will become extinct. How can this be avoided? How can this feeling of violence be reduced? This can be avoided by teaching people to think freely, to bring forth good ideas, to share ideas. Some clever person once pointed out that if everybody had always thought the same way as his ancestors did, then we would still be savages. And how true he was, because as we are evolving as human beings, we are definitely become more and more intelligent. At the same time, we should learn to become more and more wise. Wisdom is something that we should acquire. A famous 17th century English poet, John Donne, has said in one of his poems that no man is an island, entire in itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. What does it mean? That we are not an island. We cannot survive singularly. We have to live in the society. We have to live with others in the society. So we can never say that I don't want people around me. I don't need people around me. I don't have anything to do with anybody because we are dependent on people. 
in every walk of our life right from the time we get up in the morning till we sleep whatever goods and services that we use in the entire day we are dependent on people therefore we can never say that we can live a solitary life we can weave our own clothes grow our own food so on and so forth therefore this is what the title of the lesson is also all about no man is an island what is an island a piece of land that is surrounded by water the same way can a man live alone without having any connection with anybody else no that is not possible this lesson is trying to pinpoint that aspect that we cannot survive alone we cannot be an island because we are a part of a huge continent we are a part of that huge humanity and we should learn to live with each other in such a way where coexistence and existence becomes compatible and where we learn to live happily for our own good and for our own future let us now move ahead and see what he has to say in the concluding part of this lesson we must all realize that we are members of the human family and we must all stay together or fall together there is no life possible for us except through this medium of society society is like a mother and we are its babies it cradles us it nourishes us it nurtures us society is comprised of us and it is us who can take this society ahead we can see that the society progresses we have an important part to play in the society we have to march ahead the process called evolution has not stopped as i had said earlier we are evolving we will continue to evolve and this is an ongoing process without an end 50000 years ago we evolved from an ape perhaps but then we are evolving to become better human beings so we should not think that we have attained our intellect or we have attained our wisdom man has to still walk on this earth for a few more thousands of years and walk he will with a lot of wisdom and a lot of intellect he will understand that to survive and to be happy there is no need for him to be violent there is no need for him to get into conflicts there is only one way where he can find true happiness and that is by being non violent and by being truthful these are the certain truths of life the earlier we learn the better it is for us the spirit of man has faced all kinds of problems since times immemorial but then man has always come out of these problems victorious he has always been a winner he has painfully surmounted all these obstacles that have come his way each and every one of us is part of that spirit that spirit of humanity that intelligence we have to guard and preserve this intelligence against all attempts to take it away from us there is nobody who will take this away from us but ourselves we must realize that as human beings we are perhaps the most intelligent of god's creation let us understand that god has made us to be unique because we are people who can think we are beings who can feel so let us use this intellect of ours let us use this wisdom of ours to see that we survive on this earth for many 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 more years and see that the future generations that come after us live in a world that is friendly that talks about love and compassion that talks about liberty equality and fraternity we have to speak the truth 
and see that all around falsehood is destroyed and darkness is removed. This can be done by us. This will definitely be done by us as I have already said in the previous module that we are still new on this earth as a civilization, as a species. We need to live a few more years, learn from our mistakes and move ahead. But then since we are intelligent and we are wise, learning faster should not be a problem for us. We should realize that as human beings, we can contribute a lot to each other. We can contribute a lot to our world. We can contribute a lot to the future generations. Let us awake. Let us open our eyes to this reality. Let us realize that for a happy future, for a freer future, for a positive future, we must learn to respect each other and live in harmony without using violent means. Let us mitigate the conflicts that we have amongst us. Let us learn to love one another. Thank you.